I've got some time off over the Christmas period and I've decided I'm definitely going to get this jet engine up and running. I've not touched it for nearly a year now. I've been having a look around and found all the bits that I've got made. I've got a lot of it done. I also have a bigger turbocharger, but I want to get this one done first. That's a flame tube. And we made that about a year ago. That goes inside here, which is a burner can. So that goes into there. And I was going to shorten the burner can to accommodate that length flame tube, but I've decided now to leave it that length and extend the flame tube. Then I can also always put more holes in down here if I need them. The end of the flame tube will fit into the slack fit and a piece of stainless like that, which is held in the end of there by that ring all welded together. And then that transition part there from round to square is what goes onto there. So the first thing we need to do is measure the height that we need to cut this tube. The tube wants to be a little bit short because it'll expand and contract and we want some movement. And like I say, it's going to be fitted inside of that anyway. So we need to mark the length off, cut it, weld it on, and then go from there. It wants to be slightly shorter. Not by much. Quarter inch shorter. So we'll go up to the shed so we can cut that and weld it together. Stainless steel is not nice stuff to cut by hand, so I'll cut it with a probably slitting disc. But I might try and use me well position at to turn it while it's been cut. I'm not sure how well this will work, but we'll give it a try so I can cut it nice and straight. First thing you do is a market where it needs to be cut. So I'm going to rest on. Right. It's got a decent mark on it. If I can do the same with the cutting disc, it should cut it quite nicely. I think a little bit slower than that, possibly. We'll get some eye protection on and get the cutting disc and see if we can cut it. I must admit, I'm quite impressed with that. It's a nice clean square cut. That's pretty good. Nothing the matter with that. I'll probably put two or three tacks on this and then I'll put it in the well position that I welded. And this will make a, a decent job. I'll try to make a decent job. I shouldn't need any filler material on this, but it's a good fitting joint. It should just work together quite nicely.
I certainly want a nice silver colour. When the world's blue, it means it's been too hot. And that tube's warm. Of course it would be, wouldn't it? Nothing's got you wrong because it's been formed into that shape. Put it, you bastard! Right, we'll cut that off. It certainly makes a half decent job of things. Very happy with that. This is the transmission piece which actually takes the hot gases into the turbocharger. That's stainless steel, that coolant, and the other part's just male steel. So I'm going to weld it with a dissimilar rod. It's not that critical, it's not like a, not like a spaceship, is it? Right, we'll give it a whirl. A little bit more power. Right, I'm sure I'll agree that's not too shabby for a mechanic that pisses about. It's not easy if the camera wasn't there. But well, it's not too bad. A little bit clean up with the grain and say you can see where it's oxidized where there's been no purge gas inside it. Right, so I extended the flame tube, that now goes inside of there, and it's just short of the end. And it's going to fit into that piece there, which will be welded onto there, and that's welded onto there, and that all gets welded onto there. This plate did warp a little bit with the amount of weld I put in, but it, it's on a big heavy casting, so it'll pull flat, which it is pulling flat, no problem at all. See it on there, we're straight into the turbocharger. This needs a little bit of fettling with a die grinder just to knock some of the rags off where it was welded. That's happened because it was welded with no purge on the inside, and it's what they call Dingleberry's oxidation. But that's not a bad weld along the top of there. I'm quite happy with that, so at least we're getting a little bit of a little bit of progress. And this is gonna that's the way it's gonna go like that. And there's a pipe comes from here into that end, compressed air in there, and that's 
Hopefully we're going to work. And possibly the next thing is to make a stand. I've got some, I think it's 30mm aluminium box section and I'm going to make a frame up and get the turbocharger mounted. It's got to go that way, oil in the top and oil drain on the bottom. But I can orientate these any way I want, probably straight along. And then the jet pipe, which is that bit there, comes out of the back. And that's where the thrust comes out. Well, I've got a bit more interest now on it. My interest coming back. I want to get it done. I'm definitely going to get it done over the Christmas holidays. Definitely. I've got most of the parts. It's just time, really. This is the first time I've been back in the garage since I had my little accident with my wrist and all I've got to show for it now is an elastoplast and has a nice scar on there and uh, the stitches come out next Friday I've still got to be very careful I don't want to bump it What I've got to do is a nice aluminium turning job as a lad makes modified sumps in modified core engines, race engines and he's going to make a dipstick adapter for a, like a, a sump that goes into the wing of a sump He's bought this off the internet, quite a nice little thing it is and I've got to make a simple tube with some threads in to adapt that. And he's going to weld this into the, into the sump. The thread looks like you and say it's American, so it probably is. So if we measure the outside diameter of it, just under three quarter. And the thread pitch, hopefully, is, is in fact, it's 10, 10 TPI, so that is three quarter you and see. You can see that there fits in quite nicely. Now, fortunately, I have got a brand new three quarter UNC tap, so the job should be nice and straightforward. I've also got a piece of heavy walled aluminium tube with a hole in there, it needs to be 16.5. It couldn't be the right size, it's not possible. It's not, so we need to take 1.5 mil out of there, clean the end up and put some threads in and then he can do the rest himself. Get a good grip on this because I'm going to power thread it, quite a coarse thread. I'll square the end up and then we'll board it out to 16.5. We've done a lot of aluminium jobs lately. Not my favourite material by any stretch of imagination. That's a bit of nice aluminium though. You can tell it machines quite nicely, you get some good stuff and some. Not to good stuff and some real shite. Maybe the boring tool that will go in there. Probably this one. It hasn't got to be a super tight thread, it's just a, a dipstick, but we want to get it as good as we can. So once again I'm going to set the vernier to 16.5 Zero it and that gives us a direct reading of what I want out of there to get the, the right size we need 0 0.3, 0 0.35 of a mil which is not a great lot
it's 16.6 certainly near enough I use an AR, call it chuck on the tailstock for taps just to get a better hold than an ordinary drill chuck. It's a brand new tap, it should go in there, no problem at all. Put a nice full depth thread. It's probably enough there. Of taps given with what UNC, UNF, uh, they'll be thrown out and they really are ideal for some of the work I get to do. That's going to be alright. I'll run the tap in again. That's going to be alright in there. Forward, John, you stupid whore. Fair in there. Definitely settle for that. Spot on. It's got a nice little dipstick in the end as well, so it's just a job. I think he's going to extend it, but maybe it's done. Once again. It's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, if you haven't subscribed please do, and a massive thanks for all the well which has been coming in, and kind thoughts about me pretty stupid on, anyway, thanks for watching.